we made it, but my goodness, that was quite a journey. The roads are super bumpy, it was super hot, the aircon was blasting full blast, but it just didn't cut it. It is clearly a lot warmer up this end of Guatemala. Our bags are just being offloaded off the top of the minibus. We had a lovely uh, crowd on the bus, everyone was great fun but we are all feeling it and really grateful to be standing up. So after a nine hour bus ride, we have arrived in the town of Flores and we have come straight down to this tour agency here um, on the waterfront because we have booked to go to the monument Tikal at 4.30 pickup tomorrow morning. Okay, so now we are walking through Flores to try and find a hostel which uh, shouldn't be too far because Flores is a very small island or at least we think it's a very small island Hola. Hola. <laughs> staying in Hostel Aurora um, on the island of Flores and it is beautiful here. We're up, it's 4.30 and we're off to Tikal. <laughs> So after a one and a half hour bus ride, we have arrived at the entrance to Tikal. And the shuttle bus ride was 100 kitsalas each. Yep. And the entrance to the park with is- With a guide. With a guide, it's 150 kitsalas each. Let's get the tickets. Well, how long was that from the main gate? 15 minutes. About 15 minutes, and I have never seen so many wild turkeys. <laughs> so we're just waiting for the guide now before we start um, exploring this site. Piquito, I should start singing now, Despacito. <laughs> Okay, uh, ladies and gentlemen around the world, especially England, we are now uh, recording live here in the northern part of Guatemala. We're about to step into a millennial place, and I do mean a millennial place. It's a city that functioned for 1800 years. Wow. People at home, that's more than what an empire could have ever existed. Wow. So stay tuned to this recording, and uh, we will <laughs> give you an enlightenment on how they were able to put it together. And Amazing. What it might have been. Down. Amazing. Wow. So this is our guide for the day, Caesar. And if you come here to Tikal, then we always recommend you should get a guide. Otherwise, you're walking around and you don't know anything, right? Exactly. So true. Well, there you go. We were told that there were there was loads of wildlife here. We've seen some wild turkeys, but now there's a spider monkey swinging through the trees, and you can hear the howler monkeys in the background. It's phenomenal. Very, very full of wildlife, even though there's lots of people. Today, your mind has to be like a parachute. If it doesn't open, it's not going to work. There's a lot of myth, religion, history, astronomy. <laughs> So the tree behind us is the Saber Pentara tree and is actually the national tree of Guatemala. 
and uh, it's an absolutely fascinating tree with huge roots and the root structure is this way because the ground is only uh, the soil is only about 10 centimeters deep here in Chikau there are 60,000 buildings slash monuments absolutely crazy Cesar's just told us that a lot of them are actually inside and built one on top of the other um, and also there are seven temples in total So one of the problems that they have here in Tikal is that because the soil is so shallow, a number of the trees fall over and can actually damage some of the monuments here. And you can see the tree behind us has toppled over and you can see how shallow the soil actually is. Just walking along and um, Cesar pointed out these um, troughs and they're here to allow the animals to have some water because in the dry season it gets so so hot and so dry that actually they found that some of the birds were just dying in mid-flight because it was just so astronomically hot and it's probably about nine o'clock now and I'm starting to sweat it's very hot here they had a class system so by the age of seven some of the local kids would actually be cutting stone and carrying the stone they were about the width of my forearm and they would be carried up on a leather strap. There was loads of pulmonary diseases, kidney failure, liver failure because of the lime powder that the kids would have been ingesting and breathing in. Apparently by the age of 13 you were probably a dad or a family. You had a, your own family. Um, age expectancies of the people here would have been 20 to 40 years old and your time would be over. you can actually see the Tikal temple in the distance and it's got a real magical feel about it this place and to know that people didn't really survive beyond 20 is a frightening experience to hear. This is where ceremonies would have happened and they would have done uh, religious ceremonies. When you come to places like this it, I would thoroughly recommend a guide. Caesar is giving us so much information um, about the wealthy um, hierarchy of the people that would have lived in this area including stories of how um, some of the children, the chosen children that were going to go on from the wealthy families to be leaders would actually have their heads wrapped in a tight turban to create like a cone effect of their head and even have jade implanted in their teeth. It was such a hierarchy and it was a privilege to have this done. In fact, it signified that you were going to go on to be a leader of men. There's these stones dotted around, some of them are beautifully decorated and sculptured and there would have been human offerings or human sacrifices on some um, days that would have happened on these stones. As you walk through the park, it's absolutely stunning. There are mounds covered in earth and trees, but actually they would have been structures. Um, and Cesar has just shown us um, a little video where you can see that with technology they'd be able to see what's underneath. And there are massive structures, um, tiered structures just like the one we've walked on and with um, ultrasound they've been able to see that inside there are altars. Um, some of the structures are full of stones, copper stones they're called, and other ones um, have little altars at the front and the steps. Fascinating! We've also just been told by our guide as well that they obviously, because of the polluted water systems, being so dry here, they would store water. But actually the rats um, would pollute the water and they would have disease here. I've also found, fun fact, the rat is the favorite food of the jaguar, who used to be prevalent here. We have just spotted a cuchilla. It's like a large rat and that is the animal that the jaguar would eat um, normally. It's their like their staple diet and they're very cute.
She doesn't sound happy. I think we should move on. Chris has just filmed two tiramu. Uh, apparently they're quite rare to see, but we were very lucky we saw two. And then we heard a howler monkey. <laughs> Seven temples copying one constellation, which is the Big Dipper. So from an aerial view, you can actually chart the constellation of the Big Dipper. Fascinating. Caesar, our guide, has given us so much information and I really hope that I can get it across to you because it's incredibly difficult. There's so much to do with the mythical and the cosmical um, understanding of this place. Um, just behind me, there's um, an arena, he said, that would have been used for some kind of possibly a ball game. Um, different platforms, they would have thrown the ball from side to side. And he was saying that there would have been rings put in. These rings would have been played astrologically and astronomically placed, lined up with the cosmos of the universe. Um, it's absolutely mythical and it's enchanting really. Um, there's so much unknown history and so much um, tradition, so many traditions that can't be understood. So we've come down to the main square, I suppose it's called, the main area here, and we're surrounded by buildings and it is absolutely stunning. The sun is just starting to come through the clouds here and a uh, word of advice, We've heard it can get super, super hot later in the day. So we would strongly recommend doing the early tour. It left at half four this morning, um, but it's just starting to get hot. Dotted around as well are more of the sacrificial stones where there would have been human offering or sacrifice offerings. And the carving on this stone, you can just about make out there is a warrior with a prisoner at his feet. Terrifying, terrifying what would have happened here. Film Apocalypto was actually filmed and based around that time. So if you're interested in more about it, they made the movie Apocalypto, but it comes with a parental warning because it's incredibly graphic. So as part of the experience here in Tikal, you also get to do a little bit of jungle trekking or walking through the jungle. And there are loads and loads of bird species um, that you can see here. We've seen toucans and various other um, birds here and mammals. So uh, yeah, take your time it's well worth looking up and around and see what you can spot. It's there watching you. So we're just walking up some stairs to what should be an amazing viewpoint. If my legs make it up there. I've done so much walking in the last week. So after a long climb up some wooden stairs, you are greeted with this magnificent view that you can see behind us over the canopy of the jungle here in Tikal and absolutely stunning views. So this morning we're waking up on the island of Flores and for those of you that don't know Flores, it's a small island on a lake in the northeastern corner of Guatemala up towards the border with Belize and it is the main stop off for those um, of you that want to visit the site of Tikal, the Mayan site of Tikal uh, which is only a short distance from here. So Flores is surrounded by this beautiful lake that you can see behind us and it is just absolutely so lovely. The sun is up 
bright and early this morning it's very warm so here's a here's a word of advice if you want to go out exploring do it early in the morning because by lunchtime the sun is scorching Marianne's not with me this morning because she's feeling unwell back at the back at the uh, the hostel but you've got to start your day with a coffee so let's see if we can go and find some coffee with a view so one thing Flores is not short of is beautiful coffee shops and outlets with wonderful views overlooking the lake. So I'm starting the day with a beautiful cup of coffee. So Flores is actually linked to the mainland by a bridge and is a very small, quaint, lovely little town. Um, quite touristy, there's lots of tourist shops, little eateries, absolutely stunning. And if you're heading over from Belize into Guatemala, or indeed like we are tomorrow, we're heading from uh, Guatemala over to Belize City to go off to the, um, the islands, then Flores is really the main place to stop and uh, just soak up the atmosphere. There's tuk-tuks um, driving around this, uh, this town, so you can get a little ride on a tuk-tuk. There's wonderful little piers um, on the lakes, and the lake is safe for swimming. Lots of people jump in, to cool off because it has to be I think probably the hottest place that I have been maybe other than Dubai it's like you know nearly 40 degrees during the day here so the hotel that we're staying at is called Hotel Aurora that you can see behind me here and it's got the most wonderful roof terrace for aerial views over the lake so on the north shore of Flores there are lots of little boats that will take you over to the mainland uh, north of the island here if you want to go venturing and exploring a little bit further afield. There is apparently a really beautiful beach uh, the other side of the hill behind me but unfortunately on this trip we're not going to have time to go and see that but maybe uh, if you've been there let me know uh, what it's like. So to give you some idea of scale, to walk around uh, the shoreline of Flores probably only takes about 10 minutes to walk around the whole island. So from Flores you can get buses to pretty well anywhere. You can go on to Belize City, you can go on to Lanquin, Antigua, Guatemala City or Mexico. And the area by the bridge that you can see behind me is where all of the buses tend to go um, early in the morning. So if you've booked a bus, with one of the tour guides here this is the area that it goes from so one concern a lot of people have is whether or not there are atm machines here to get cash out on flores we have in fact found two there's one by the ramada hotel up the stairs in the shop that you can see behind me and the second atm is located in the small supermarket that you can see behind me which is actually on the road that runs up the west side of the island and it's so nice as in many parts um, of Central America particularly Guatemala when you walk around is the buildings are so bright and colorful it can't but help make you feel a little bit more happy early in the morning so this is the wonderful view that we have from our bedroom and one word of warning when you get any form of accommodation in Guatemala because it is super hot even if you don't have aircon make sure you have a fan because you really really do need it so one of the best things about where we are staying is this wonderful rooftop terrace so check out this wonderful view from the roof of where we are staying absolutely amazing and uh, Victor the guy that runs the little restaurant up here serves you food and drinks all day and you can just sit here and admire that beautiful view Well, that was a hot and sweaty night. And it's not because I'm just married to him. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been astronomically and, oh, bugger, astronomically and 
What's the other one? Astrologically. So, cut. So this morning we are waking up on the island of Flores. And for those that don't eat, blah, 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 cut. Huh? I've already recommended him. We've already recommended already him. Recommended asking for He's you. photo bombing us in the back here. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> Or maybe it's a mating call. Maybe he thinks I'm attractive. <laughs> maybe I look like a Mrs. Howler monkey. So one thing Flores is not short of is tuk-tuks. <laughs> Cut.